All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to tackle this whole idea of actually going out and looking at insects yourself. It's really kind of an exciting step. We've gone through a few videos already, or hopefully you have, and you've learned about some of the many different types of hemiptera that are out there and that can be seen. And so using that knowledge now, hopefully we can all go out this summer and look around our backyard, um, when we go camping, potentially at a national park someday soon, um, we can be looking around and cataloging what we're seeing. And we need to know how to collect that information uh, effectively. You know, it's sometimes harder than we think to find insects or especially new insects or species that we're not familiar with. So it's good to learn about a variety of techniques that can kind of uh, get at different habitats, um, enable collection at different times of the year or you know maybe you're looking at, at night and you want certain techniques to do that so hopefully this lecture does that um, and uh, yeah so let's get right into it I should mention before we start too that whenever you are collecting be sure that you're really sensitive to where you are do you have permission to be collecting and um, are you on private property should you get permission to be there a lot of us are going to be in our yard so no big deal but um, just pay attention to that, especially if you are collecting physical insects, that you really can't do that on national parks or government land without permission. That, that's a big no-no. So make sure you get permission to do that. Um, yeah, but um, definitely encourage you to go out and start collecting uh, when it's appropriate. To enable you further with this whole virtual situation, we're really encouraging the use of iNaturalist. It's a great um, application that can be used on your smartphone phone, or on the computer. Um, if it's on your phone, you can actually take photos and upload photos onto the app, and it will even give you suggestions of what you're looking at, which is amazingly helpful, um, especially when there's so many insects out there, as we've been learning with the other video. Um, so it gives you a nice head start, and um, you can upload it to our project as well. Uh, the Great Basin National Park will be posting a 2020 BioBlitz group that you will be able to join, and um, that way we can all work together on getting as many species for this project as possible. So check out iNaturalist, make an account if you already don't already have one, and um, it'll be useful beyond this project too. Um, you'll use it for years to come, I think. I, I love using it. I just started, I, I've had it for years, and I haven't really done it a ton, but just doing this project, creating this project with the, the others in this group, I've really uh, gravitated towards its just usefulness. So yeah, go check it out. So let's get into how to collect insects. There's, a, there's many different ways. Obviously, you can just run out and grab one, right? But there's a few techniques that are really standardized and have tools and techniques behind them. So I'm going to hit up just a few topics. There are many others out there, many other trapping styles. These are just a few. Sweep net sampling is a big one because essentially um, you can go do this in an agricultural system. You can do this in a, like a prairie or grassland, anywhere that's open that has vegetation. You basically have a standard insect net that's got the round hoop and with a net behind it and a kind of a conical net. And you'll walk at a nice even pace and sweep the foliage below you if it's you know in a row crop or if it's just in grasses. And you'll get all kinds of uh, cicadellidae or cercopidae, all kinds of things that probably Amy talked more about. Lots of small hemipterans that'll show up that way. So that's a good uh, start too. And also you can use this to, you know, snatch a hemipteran out of a tree branch or one that's flying past you or something like that. Um, nets in general are great. Sweep net sampling, even more effective. And because you don't even have to aim, you just hit the plants, it's no brainer. Um, and then there's beet sheet sampling. This is something I do quite a bit in my own research. It's essentially you use a piece of canvas that is suspended over like um, two sticks that are in like an X form. And you can make little pockets on the edges of the canvas for the sticks to wedge into. And it kind of creates this portable blanket that you can hold up and underneath tree branches, leaves, bushes, um, foliage of any kind and shake the foliage, agitate the foliage so the insects fall off the foliage onto your little sheet that you have suspended there. 
And you can see there's many different ways to do it. You can hold it up with sticks, you can put it on the ground, um, lots of ways to beat sheet. Um, BioQuip is a great place to look online. They're a company that sells beat sheets, so if you want to do that. You can also use a stick that will extend your reach into trees to knock foliage higher up to knock things down onto your canvas. You can see in this photo, let me see if I can get my laser pointer out here. I'll see. Here's this really cool tool that entomologists can use to extract an insect off of the sheet itself. It's called an aspirator. And uh, these are great tools. They basically take the insect up into this vial and there's a filter here and you're using your own suction from your mouth to create a suction vacuum and it sucks these insects right in, especially with small insects, this is really helpful. So check out an aspirator too, they're really cool. And you can also find those on places like BioQuip and other online shops. Um, pitfall traps. This is a really great way to passively trap for insects. It doesn't really require you to go searching for them. Maybe not quite as exciting, but it's a very effective way of getting a lot of like um, terrestrial ground uh, living chemistrons. Uh, you get a lot of beetles this way. I know we're not looking for beetles in this bio blitz, but this is a really cool way of getting a lot of these terrestrial insects. And essentially you create a pit in the ground with a cup. Could be even like a little Dixie cup or something from your house. And uh, you could have preserving fluid at the bottom. Um, there's a number of preserving fluids. Or you can just have an empty cup, which is the safest option. And the insect could potentially still be alive when you come to check on the trap. Um, they can't crawl out of the slippery edges of the bowl or cup that you put there. And so the insect falls in and is just waiting there for you to come back. People extend uh, the size of a pit trap by making a pipe with one edge lengthwise cut into it and it leads down to a larger bucket and that's another way to just create a really large area of a trap that insects passing by will fall in and then be led to your collection jar and you can see a, a variety of things that way and it's a lot less work than other methods so pitfall traps are really neat um so light trapping i think this has got to take the cake as far as just exciting um trap and uh collection methods go I love going out and doing black lighting or just night collection for insects in general. You get a lot of um, lepidopterans, a lot of moths and things that are attracted to light at night, but you will get a variety of other orders of insects, including hemiptera at times. Um, and it's a pretty simple method. You essentially suspend a sheet of white cloth uh, with poles or with string from trees or something like that. And then you hang a light source right next to that sheet so that insects come to the light and land on your sheet. And then you can expect, inspect them and uh, collect them or just look at them, observe them. And it just gets really exciting on summer evenings, especially now in July where it's warm and you'll see just a ton of insects show up. You can't just use any old light. You could, but you wouldn't get very much diversity. If you wanna see a lot of diversity in insects, and get just a ton of just volume of insects. Black lights are good. Um, there's metal halide. There's um, a few other types of insect rated bulbs that you'd want to look into online. Black lights are a good place to start. Um, they'll they'll be on there if you type in you uh, insect black lights on Google. It'll come up with some products. But this is a great activity just for a group of people to you know kind of get involved with, and you get a lot of insects. Really cool. Another passive form of collection is a malaise trap, and this is essentially just putting up a sheet that has like mesh consistency, and it's really fine mesh, and you suspend it in a forest or in your backyard, and you orient it in such a way that it has kind of a rectangular shape, and it's open on two sides, and one of the corners has kind of a conical funnel effect where the insects hit the mesh and then they start crawling upwards. Insects generally do crawl upwards, especially in lighted situations. And they crawl up to the highest point of your mesh, which is this funnel shaped mesh area where the top mesh panel here leads the insects all the way up into this tunnel of mesh that leads to a jar. And you can see that jar could be filled with um, a number of preserving fluids. One that you might easily be able to get your hands on is something like nail polish remover or like a light acetone or something that's 
uh, mild uh, preserving fluid and that way the insects will just fall right into that jar for you and you come and check out what you've got a few days later. Really cool way of trapping. There's also the Burley's Funnel which is where you can find smaller uh, creatures that live in like leaf litter and things like that where you have a big funnel with mesh like sieve material under your like leaf litter and this is all in the funnel. And at the bottom of the funnel, you have a collection jar. And at the very top of the funnel, the mouth of the funnel, you have a light source uh, that basically drives the insects downward away from the heat and the bright light. And they fall through the sieve and into your preserving fluid or your collection jar. This is how you find a lot of things like springtails or small mites or uh, things like that. You might even find some smaller hemipterans. So kind of an interesting tactic. And then there's just funnel traps in general. And there's many different types of funnel traps. I, I had to mention them because they're very popular. A lot of times they're used for exterminating purposes, but they can certainly be used to collect. Uh, you just want to be checking the trap pretty frequently so that the insect doesn't die due to starvation or overexposure. Um, but yeah, there's a variety of these traps that en enable this um, insect to be attracted to color or uh, chemical cue. And a lot of these chemical cues you can buy online. They might be a more expensive route, so I recommend trying some of the other options first. But if you see anything like these uh, traps you see, you see here, um, they're usually attracting an insect. And this funnel effect is super effective because it lets an insect in, but they're not smart enough to find their way back to the small opening in the cone. Um, so yeah, most of us are familiar with the funnel trap. Just wanted to kind of show you a few other styles here. And just so you know, this funky one here is for Japanese beetle. Go look up Japanese beetle. It's a good insect to know. Um, yeah, so once you have collected, you want to know what to do with these insects. Right? You can't just keep on them in, in your net or your trap forever. So what do we do? Well, it really depends. You could just take a photo of them and put them on iNaturalist and then let them go. That's cool because you preserve some of what nature has if you want to make a permanent collection, though, which some of us do, um, there are a few ways to process and unfortunately kill these insects to be pinned and later uh, preserved. So ethanol is a good thing to use if you're going to be putting soft-bodied um, hemipterans or other insects in vials. And usually 70 90% ethanol is what scientists use. A uh, really easy way to also do this instead of using a liquid preservative is putting your insect in the freezer inside of a collection jar or a vial and freezing an insect for at least a number of hours, 24 hours would be best. And then you come back and you can let the insect thaw and you can manipulate the insect for your collection at that point. Really easy way to do it. Everyone's got a freezer. There's also a kill jar that you can create, which Basically, usually they have plaster of Paris on the bottom of this glass jar with a sealed tight-fitting lid. Make sure to label the jar that it's caution poisonous. And the plaster of Paris can be filled with or impregnated with any number of preserving and um, toxic fumigants that you can put in there. One that I can think of is a really easy thing you can do is instead of plaster of Paris, you could use cotton balls infused with nail polish remover. Um, but a dry uh, plaster of Paris with um, other things infused into that will be better. I won't list some of those toxins and poisons here because I think it'd be best if you go read up and le read all the warning labels and things on the different options. But a kill jar is another very popular way to collect insects. So yeah, uh, remember to always give permission, but go out and look for some insects. And once you have those insects preserved and taken out of your trapping method, let's go ahead and talk about collecting or putting them into collection. So that's the next video. Stay tuned. We'll talk to you later.